So way back in 2010, a friend and a friend and I uh, saw Li Ming in a tourism brochure, and we went and checked it out, and we found a lot of rock, a lot of potential. We kind of saw the area as a a mixture of Indian Creek and Zion, kind of like Indian Creek on steroids. So we decided to talk to the government, the park people, uh, see how they felt about rock climbers coming there and climbing climbing the walls, and they were pretty open to it. And uh, since then have encouraged uh, climbing as a recreational activity in the park. Since then we've developed nearly 300 pitches of climbing over over 200 routes uh, pushing in 513 plus and now we're looking at some possible 514a climbs uh, happening in Liming. Personally I've developed about 170 of those routes uh, all the way up into, into 513. Uh, it's been a great experience of exploration and kind of discovering uh, what's possible and impossible for, for the human experience. I have basically a, a limitless number of projects uh, going on at one time. Uh, recently I, I did the first pre-ascent of a route called Another World. Uh, it was originally aided by my friend Dane Schellenberg. Uh, I think it was back in 2012 he aided up it. Um, and last year uh, I freed to his original anchor um, and then just on this trip uh, we put an extension that puts, us, puts the route as one pitch uh, up to the base of the roof roof project that we're calling the Honeycomb Dome project, which is probably going to be a, a possible 514 climb. The route starts um, as kind of like a crimpy, a crimpy traverse. Uh, you kind of got to like use your heels and, and stuff like that because the because the wall cuts out from underneath you. Um, and when you're done with the traverse, you uh, get established in the actual crack. It's kind of like a lightning bolt that goes down this uh, overhung wall. Very quickly, you're met by the crux. It's kind of like an 18 degree overhung uh, point, 0.75 section. Uh, I have to do two or three moves on overhung ring locks uh, to get up into the tight hands. Uh, and then you just kind of got to keep your wits about you and uh, do some tight hand hand jams on steep terrain up for another, another 10 meters or so. And then you have uh, a red point crux before the first anchor. Once you get through the first red point crux, you gotta, you get kind of like a chicken wing rest, kind of like in this off width section, and then uh, there's kind of like the last crux before, before the end of the route. You need to, you kind of, you kind of weasel your way up the off width and get uh, a fairly good finger lock. Um, but it's pretty hard to get up into it where you can get the finger lock really good, and then you have to uh, control your body out of the off width using this one finger lock. Uh, I find that to be uh, a fairly a fairly difficult move. Um, so it's kind of like one ring lock and then you cross over, get another ring lock, and then, then your jams start getting better and there's a glow, glory hand jam before you get onto the ledge. It's a spectacular 510C. Ha! It's fucking easy, 510C. 510C. All right, kick! <sighs> climbing in China and I was hanging out in Yangshua uh, working the summer and fall season and Mike Dobie came through and he was getting people stoked on the first Leeming Trad Festival and I went out with my climbing partner at the time and we camped in the freezing cold and that was my first experience with crack climbing and trad climbing in general. What's it like climbing with Mike? Um, he's a really good coach. He will push you and not be sympathetic if you want to take. Any more advice? Try harder. <laughs> I believe it's just try. I... Try. <laughs> try! <laughs> but that's good. He gives really good beta and usually helps me a lot, so that's helpful. Next two routes at the Yangshou Sports Climber Crag. I'm gonna go for the one on the left, I think. 
Not really sure that's gonna be appealing or not. Looks like it's gonna be a bit of a roof off with. All right, we'll see how it goes. This last trip, I helped develop a new crag. Uh, there's a crag that's like a 10 minute walk from the main road. All right, Mike, how was the first route on the Yangshou Crag? Uh, the Yangshou Sport Climbers <laughs> Crag. Uh, yeah, it was really good. A um, little bit of aid trickery at the start. I think it's kind of like a slot chimney-ish thing that protects fairly well. And yeah, it's a sweet crag. There's long pitches. The one that I was working was maybe like 38 meters by the time I put the anchor in. And it starts out with like kind of handsy ring locks with good feet and then there's a traverse and then it gets pretty steep with like wide hands, fist jams and a bulgy roof that's probably the crux for me and then up this like really thin crack at the top and then you traverse out the roof um, and yeah it's a great climb. <laughs> Day two developing at the new crag which we're semi calling the Yangshou Sport Climbers Crag because of the nice approach. I'm hanging on one line, but some nice hammering under a roof here. Dobie's on another line. Can't really see him right now, but he's on scrub tech duty. Looks like we'll have some good stuff here though. There's sweet, really difficult, maybe rampy finger crack. Oops. Rampy finger crack that comes after a really, really nice, handsy, slightly overhung section. And here's the view from the top. Not too shabby over there. You can see a new crag. No one's touched it yet. Lots of excitement over here. I actually came with five friends that I met in Lao. And then I met Mike, a bunch of people. It was quite a good crowd over there last year. And um, we just hung out and climbed for two months. I did uh, the second ascent of Air China, which is it's pretty funny because I actually I knew I wanted to do that climb. Like I, I've heard of uh, Air China before, and I'd seen a photo of someone climbing a really cool red, and I knew I wanted to do a red. I thought Air China was gonna be maybe too hard for me, but I really knew I wanted to do a red. And then uh, when I got to Liming, I was like looking for the red, looking for the red, and I couldn't find it. And then I asked Mike one day, I was like, hey Mike, you know what climb this is? I was like, yeah, that's Air China. Uh, yeah, anyways, so I tried it and I did it, and that was pretty cool. So it's this line that you see from town. It's um, uh, over 70 meter line, and uh, it's really cool. I think the coolest thing about it is you can see from the whole valley, uh, which means it's really wide. Once we got there, we realized that uh, most of it, from the first anchor that Evan placed before up to the 40 meter point, or maybe actually the 50 meter point, is uh, over uh, a size 6 can. So, like, it would take like a valley giant or big bros to protect it. Uh, we don't have any, it would have been really nice to do that, but we don't have any, so I placed five bolts from the first anchor that's maybe like 12 meters, 15 meters to the 40 meter point, it has five bolts. And then after that you can start placing gear. Uh, it goes on for another 30 meters after that. And it goes slowly, goes from like six to overhanging fives, which is pretty cool. And then at the very top, maybe the last like 12 meters or so, it thins out to like hands for a little bit, or fists, hands for a little bit. Then short section of 0.75s and 5s with really good pots, you can still get hand jams. And then the last maybe 15 feet, you the crack thins out to triple zeros, and you have a sloper hand traverse. To the left and then you get like a bit of a better slopper you can you get your foot on the rail and you mantle to a pod and then it's quite spaced out pods and uh, and uh, you just you do like a little dino move to like a, a top hole that's pretty good and then you can mantle into the black hole and you can clip the chains which is pretty cool because after like 50 meters of walk with climbing you get like a, a little break and overhanging hands then you get like some 0.75s some fives, some fives, and then you get like this bolder move at the end which i'm pretty stoked on What's it's it? What's it like doing battle for 50 meters in a massive off with, without breaks? <sighs> Takes a while. It leaves some marks, and uh, uh, I don't know. It's pretty cool. It's 
It's been pretty cool going back every season. Uh, the first season at the festival, I remember there being a good amount of foreigners. Oh, what can you see in there, Raul? And Chinese climbers. The second festival, I remember there being more Chinese climbers. And this last year, there were a lot more Europeans and people who had seen Li Ming in magazines and stuff. So I think it's kind of even more popular. Um, and more people are coming to Li Ming with an interest in development. So it's kind of cool. There's still a lot of potential for new route development, particularly multi pitches. Um, yeah. <laughs> Nice, man. The future is bright, definitely. <laughs>